Lincoln has a fragment, it's called a fragment on Niagara Falls. It's something that he wrote, never finished, stuck it in a desk, nobody ever knew about it until after he was gone and they started going through his papers. But he wrote this thing in 1848 because he had, uh, you know, he was served as one term in Congress. And 1848 was between the two sessions of Congress. And back then, you, people talk about Congress doesn't work very much. Well, back then, they really didn't work very much. They only worked for like three months. Then they went home and they had their day job until they come back for the next session, which is three months, and that's your two years. In between those two sessions, Lincoln went up to Massachusetts, my home state, did a lot of lectures and, and stumping for Zachary Taylor as for president, and it helped Zachary Zachary Taylor win the, win the election. Um, but on his way back, he went through upstate New York, went to Buffalo, and then took his family to Niagara Falls. Saw these beautiful, beautiful Niagara Falls, and I have information that says he got a haircut while he was there. <coughs> and then they got into a, a steamship, and they went through the Great Lakes, back to Chicago, through the Illinois and Michigan Canal, which I'll mention a little bit, back down to Springfield, and then worked until the next session of Congress several months later. So on this cruise, on this steamship, um, this is where we think he wrote this fragment. And when you look at this fragment, you can see there's tons and tons and tons of science. Uh, so he starts off in this fragment talking about, well, you know, it, the physics of it is no great wonder. You know, you have a river, it's flowing along nicely, and then it hits a perpendicular jog. So it basically finds a cliff, falls off of it, crashes into the, into the river below it, sends up a lot of mist, and if it's sunny, you'll get perpetual rainbows. Okay, he says, that's no big, big stretch, and everybody knows that. I actually, and I talk about in the book, how I think he really, he understood how rainbows are formed more than most people, uh, because he does some, he talks a lot about how the eye works. So I think he understood that uh, rainbows are formed when you know, the sunlight hits the water droplets, which act like prisms and split the light into its component wavelengths, and you get different colors. So there's that, and I talk about whether, you know, whether or not he actually knew that, but I think he did. But he definitely knew some things, because he talks about the geology and the erosion of the falls. So he understands that some rocks are harder than other rocks, and those rocks that are not quite as hard, they erode faster. And that the, the falls have eroded back from where they originally were uh, by mi several miles. And he calculates, and I'll talk in a second about, he was a math guy, he calculated that the age of the world according to how long the, the, it took for, these, uh, for these, the river to, to erode backwards. And he came up with at least 14,000 years. Now I think everybody knows the world is, longer, is older than 14,000 years, but 15,000 years is about the end of the last ice age which is when Niagara Falls started to form, when the, the, the glaciers were going back. 